Chapter 1 Midnight Swim The engine made a bizarre chugging sound, like a dying robot llama, followed by an innocuous click click, then silence. Gemma turned the key harder, hoping that would somehow breathe life into the old Chevy, but it wouldn't even chug anymore. The llama had died. You have got to be kidding me, Gemma said, and cursed under her breath. She'd worked her butt off to pay for this car. Between the long hours she spent training at the pool and keeping up on her schoolwork, she had little time for a steady job. That had left her stuck babysitting the horrible Tenemeyer boys. They put gum in her hair and poured bleach on her favorite sweater. But she toughed it out. Gemma had been determined to get a car when she turned 16, even if that meant dealing with the Tenemeyers. Her older sister Harper had gotten their father's old car as a hand-me-down. Harper had offered to let Gemma drive it, but she declined. Mainly, Gemma needed her own car because neither Harper nor her father readily approved of her late-night swims at Anthemusa Bay. They didn't live far from the bay, but the distance wasn't what bothered her family. It was the late-night part, and that was the thing that Gemma craved most. Out there... Under the stars, the water seemed like it went on forever. The bay met the sea, which in turn met the sky, and it all blended together like she was floating in an eternal loop. There was something magical about the bay at night, something that her family couldn't seem to understand. Gemma tried the key one more time, but it only elicited the same empty clicking sound from her car. Sighing, she leaned forward and stared out at the moonlit sky through the cracked windshield. It was getting late, and even if she left on foot right now, she wouldn't get back from her swim until almost midnight. That wouldn't be a huge problem, but her curfew was eleven. Starting off the summer being grounded on top of having a dead car was the last thing she wanted. Her swim would have to wait for another night. She got out of the car. When she tried to slam the door shut in frustration, it only groaned, and a chunk of rust fell off at the bottom. This is by far the worst three hundred dollars I ever spent, Gemma muttered. Car trouble? Alex asked from behind her, startling her so much she nearly screamed. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. No, it's okay. She waved it off and turned around to face him. I didn't hear you come out. Alex had lived next door to them for the past ten years and there was nothing scary about him. As he got older, he tried to smooth out his unruly dark hair, but a lock near the front always stood up, a cowlick he could never tame. It made him look younger than eighteen, and when he smiled, he looked younger still. There was something innocent about him, and that was probably why Harper had never thought of him as anything more than a friend. Even Gemma had dismissed him as uncrushworthy, until recently. She'd seen the subtle changes in him, his youthfulness giving way to broad shoulders and strong arms. It was that new thing, the new manliness he was beginning to grow into, that made her stomach flutter when Alex smiled at her. She still wasn't used to feeling that way around him, so she pushed it down and tried to ignore it. The stupid piece of junk won't run! Gemma gestured to the rusty compact and stepped over to where Alex stood on his lawn. I've only had it for three months, and it's dead already. I'm sorry to hear that, Alex said. Do you need help? You know something about cars? Gemma raised an eyebrow. She had seen him spend plenty of time playing video games or with his nose stuck in a book, but she'd never once seen him under the hood of a car. Alex smiled sheepishly and lowered his eyes. He had been blessed with tan skin, which made it easier for him to hide his embarrassment. But Gemma knew him well enough to understand that he blushed at almost anything. No, he admitted with a small laugh and motioned back to the driveway where his blue Mercury Cougar sat. But I do have a car of my own. He pulled his keys out of his pocket and swung them around his finger, for a moment, he managed to look slick before the keys flew off his hand and hit him in the chin. Gemma stifled a laugh as he scrambled to pick them up. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. He rubbed his chin and shrugged it off. So, do you want a ride? 
Are you sure? It's pretty late. I don't want to bother you. Nah, it's no bother. He stepped back toward his car, waiting for Gemma to follow. Where are you headed? Just to the bay. I should have known. He grinned. Your nightly swim? It's not nightly, Gemma said, though he wasn't too far off base. Come on. Alex walked over to the cougar and opened his door. Hop in. All right, if you insist. Gemma didn't like imposing on people, but she didn't want to pass up a chance at swimming. A car ride alone with Alex wouldn't hurt either.